Hey guys, uh, Chapadong here, and we're going to go through a little bit of contest selection today for today's topic, and we're going to go through a little bit of um, market share. And what we're really looking for in these two concepts, contest selection, what contests should you be playing, and do they are they winnable, and do they pay, and how top-heavy are they really, versus market share, which is how winnable is the contest if I don't max it out? Okay, so let's deal with that one first. Let's talk market share. What is market share? Market share is how much of the lineups of a contest you can consume yourself. Okay, if I'm in a contest, say, let's see if we can find one here. This one's multi-entry at 239. It allows seven lineups out of 239 people. If I do seven lineups out of 239 people, that's seven divided by 239, 2.9%, 3%. You're never going to see more than 3%. The sites don't allow it. What this means is I can control 3% of the shares of this contest. I, By maxing it out, I'm effectively shortening the number of individual players that can get in there. Okay, I'm controlling what I can, which is I would like to turn this contest, instead of 100 people getting in it, I'd rather only 20 people get in it. I feel like I can beat 20 people easier than I can beat 100 people, perhaps. I, I think that's the mentality behind, um, in a lot of cases, why uh, some of these guys multi-entry train these uh, double ups and things where they put 150 of the same lineup in the double up. And it's really not a very smart strategy, in my opinion. Maybe for the double up it is, but I, I see them do it in the nickel GPPs and stuff. It's not a smart. You're only taking one shot. Why would you turn a mass multi entry tournament into a single entry tournament? That makes no sense to me. The single entry tournament, nobody has. An advantage over you because they only get one lineup one shot each in 150 max the 150 lineup guy has an advantage over the single lineup guy because he's taking 150 different chances taking 100 different 50 different shots at the nut he can play different combinations he can use different players he can use off the wall plays he can use chalky plays he can do a lot of different things where you only get one shot so in essence that means that the mathematical advantage, that's more of a numerical advantage um, on really, really big contests. But on the small contests where you can get that 3%, that helps. When you can get 2 to 3%, you need to be maxing those contests or don't play them. Because the guys that are maxing them do have an advantage. Putting one lineup in this 239 uh, entry contest doesn't make a lot of sense because the people that are playing seven lineups actually have an advantage over you. And you're giving them that advantage. Stick to contests that maybe where that, that advantage gets watered down. So let's go up here to the 7,185 person contest. 150 entries. So, oh man, 150 entries. Guy has an advantage on you. Does he? 2.9% is about the max you'll find. But if I put 150 lineups into 7,185, I've only got a 2.1% advantage. All of a sudden it dropped a percent. Why? The contest is getting bigger. As the contest gets bigger, I have less and less uh, market share when I end, when I max out this contest. Therefore, I have less and less of an actual edge over you if I max it out because the contest is big enough that I, I'm not able to gobble up as much. For me to get a 3% market share out of 7,185 people, I'd need to be able to put 215 lineups in here and it won't let me. Okay, so if we go one step further up here into the 23,900 whatever, watch this. 150 entries, 23,952. Oops, gotta get my calculator back up again. 150 entries, 23,952. Not even 1%, 0.6% market share. You enter one lineup, or you enter seven lineups, or you enter 25 lineups, or you enter 55 lineups. You've got literally no advantage over, I've got no advantage over you if I put 150 in this thing. The only advantage I really have is that I'm taking more chances than you. I'm not consolidating the tournament. I'm not shortening the player field in this tournament at all. Not like in a 3% contest. I'm doing this in a 0.6% contest. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, it, it does make sense to max it out if you want to, but somebody who's not maxing it out can also compete in this contest because the contest is so big, it kind of negates the advantage of the guy maxing it out. That's what you find in your nickels and your quarters in a lot of cases. When you start finding other contests, like let's jump over into NFL, because I want to, we'll talk a little bit more about um, 
what we're looking for here. Now see tonight we've got an 820. I want to show one contest in specific here that's on the full slate, not on the single game. Maybe we'll come back to the single game. But if I come down here to the $1 contests, there's one right there. It's a big one. 150 out of 142,000, 143,000 people. 150 divided by 143,000 people is a tenth of a percent, right? Like no advantage whatsoever. Okay. But if I come down here to this multi-entry contest here, 4705, I can put 150 into that, 150 divided by 4705, and there's my 3%, 3.1%. It's actually the highest I've ever seen. 2.97 is the highest I've seen. 3.2%. This, if you're going to enter this contest, you must max it out. Otherwise, don't enter it at all. Go to the other one. Go to the great big one. Okay? Because you're giving up an you're giving up an edge here if you enter this and don't max it out because the contest is small enough for the number of entries. Uh oh, I lied. Look, it's only a hundred max. Well, there you go. So a hundred divided by forty-seven oh five is two point one percent. There you go. Now we're back into the now we're back into the ball game a little bit. But what I was getting ready to say was if you can get that three percent, then you should not be in this when you, if you're not going to fill the three percent. That's the takeaway here, okay? So if you can fill up to 2% or up to 1%, it becomes less and less important as this percentage number gets smaller. You just take the number of entries that you are allowed and then divide by the number of players or whatever, the number of lineups that can be entered into the contest, get a percentage. The smaller the percentage, the less the advantage is over the guy maxing it out, okay? That's really all that means. Now, how winnable are these contests because to be quite honest with you um, you're gonna beat 1100 people more often than you're gonna beat 4700 people more often than 29,000 more often than 142,000 people right the bigger the contest you get a 1 in 1100 shot a 1 in 4700 shot a 1 in 29,000 shot a 1 in 140 something thousand shot obviously the closer and closer you know you get to the smaller contests the better chance you have at winning these contests, okay? Your lineup doesn't have to have quite the crazy high score, but everybody likes to chase the big prize. Why? If I look at this contest right here, 100 lineups, first place is 400 bucks. 400 bucks doesn't excite a lot of people for a dollar, especially when they put $100 into this. That's only four times my total investment if I win it. I mean, barring all the other things that cashed, but 400 bucks, that doesn't turn people on. It's only four times my money. That's not what I want out of this contest, right? Now, okay, you're going to win that more often than you're going to this 142,000 person one, but hey, $1 or in this case, $150, if you max it, turns into $5,000. $5,000 divided by 150 bucks is 33 times your money, right? Times your total investment. That's good. It's better than four times your total investment. But is it winnable? You're not going to beat 140,000 people as often as you're going to beat 4,000 people. So how do you compare these things apples to apples? How do you look at these things kind of side by side? I mean, in absolute terms, you're not going to win this as often, but it does pay better. You have to determine maybe how top heavy these things are going to get, because this is the barometer I always use. Try to build for the top 1%. You can do that. You can do that with enough frequency that it won't feel like you're waiting forever and it won't drive you nuts. It, it, you may only win one or two a month, you know, one or two of those 1% lineups a month, but you will win them. And the more you enter, the faster you'll win them because you'll produce 1% top 1% lineups more often. The more lineups you enter, obviously. Now, let's compare what that 1% does say in this tournament here. It's just a single entry tournament. Nobody has an advantage over anybody. But a 1% lineup, move the decimal place over two places, it's 11th place or 12th place, 11.7, be 12th place, 10 bucks, 10x, that's pretty good. For a 1% lineup, 10 times your investment is pretty good, okay? Top 10th of 1% would be next, and that's 1.1, it's basically first place, it's 100x. So remember those numbers, 10x and 100x. And let's go comparing other tournaments. Because again, it's small, it's winnable, it produces a decent ROI because it's a single entry tournament, et cetera. But let's step up to this small dive and see what happens. 4,700 people. Top 1% lineup is 47th place. 10x, oh, the same, cool. Top 1 10th of 1% is 4.7 or 5th 
place. So 50x, not 100x, 50x. But you've got a little bit of room to go past that top 1%. You've only got a few people to beat. You can get upwards of 400x. That's pretty good. This is another pretty good tournament. There will be people in here at 100 lineups, though, that are putting in 100 bucks and are only getting four times their money back or worse if they win or if they place well or whatever. But let's go to this one here. And let's say 1% 1 is 100 and what, 1,428. 1428. That's in here. That's 6x. See how it dropped? It went from 10x to 6x. You're, if you produced a 1% lineup, you know, say, I don't know, say every time you build lineups, do you want to get paid $6 on them or $10 on them? Do you want to get paid six times your buy-in or $10 or 10 times your buy-in? Well, 10 times your buy-in. So you're, it shouldn't be in this contest necessarily, unless you can prove to yourself that you can build top 10th of 1% lineups as well, because those are much stronger lineups. And that's 142nd place, which is 25x, which is not the 50x that we just saw. And it's certainly not the 100x that would have won the other contest, right? Yet, this still gives you room to go. But look at the room it takes. You still got to beat 140-something people. That's a lot of people you still got to beat to get to the 5,000. How realistic is it that if you don't produce 1% lineups very often and you don't produce 10th of 1% lineups as often, how realistic is it of you to build for first place? It's not very realistic. This is a scratch-off lottery ticket. Okay? Plus, it's very, very top-heavy. First place, $5,000 out of 120, well, it should be about twelve grand. It's actually not too terribly top-heavy, now that I look at it. You want about 10% of this total prize pool. That'd be $12,000 to first place. This is pretty flat. If I look at, I mean, we got the 1x and the 0.1x and whatever. We've got those percentages down. But I look here, 5, 8, 10, 11, 50, 12, 50. It's at about 13,000. That's only 10% in the top six. I go way down in here. Top 30% is pretty good. Top 10 is only 12%. Top 30% is usually what I look for. What, where's the $40,000 mark? And if it's all like the top 50 out of 100. 40,000 people. It's a very top-heavy contest. This is not the case. This one actually is a pretty good contest for an MME type of structure. If I come up here into the quarters, it gets a little ridiculous because now I've got 150 lineups, no mathematical advantage whatsoever by maxing this. It's just taking more chances, right? But 1% 1 is 3,113th. So 3,113th, 1 that's only 4x. We could get 10x in other contests. We can get 6x in a reasonable, we're only getting 4x now. Would you rather get paid four times your money or 10 times your money, right? Now, the thing is, this has a much bigger first place. So if you really get lucky, you got a big ROI for that. But if we go top 10th of 1%, that's 311th. So 311th is five, that's what, out quarters? That's 20x when we had 25 and 50 and even 100x. Do you see where I'm going with this? The smaller contests may look worse on paper. It may look worse to your sexy eyes because everybody wants to turn a quarter into $2,000. But the other contests pay better. What are you doing? What are you in these things for unless it's just for fun or unless you're trying to prove that you can beat 100 and some odd thousand people or 300,000 people in this case? How often are you going to create a one out of 300,000 lineup? Even if you I have twice the advantage of everybody else in this competition. You're only doing it twice out of 311,000 tries. And if you do it twice in 311,000 tries, it's once every 150,000 tries. Can you wait that long? Can your bankroll wait that long? If the answer is no, you're in the wrong contests. I just showed you what contests to enter. Come down here and play the more reasonable things. You could even play something like this or something like this or even a single entry like this. What, one, two, three, four of them? And I guarantee you when these fill, they probably put another one up there. You got four shots at these. If I put $4, one in each of those, that's 25 times my money right there. $4 invested across these and I win one of them, I win 100 bucks. This is how you grow your bankroll. You get into these more reasonable, more winnable tournaments and you stay out of these lottery ticket tournaments. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. This is the kind of stuff we teach you inside DFSArmy.com. This is the kind of stuff we talk about. So why don't you do yourself a favor and come become a VIP? Use the coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, get a 10% off discount. Come in and look me up. Let's talk. I want to make you a better player, and I'll do it by teaching you bankroll and contest selection and market share and fundamentals of constructing winnable lineups. Get in here. I'd love to talk to you.
Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon.